Hey folks, Uncle Troy here. I never intended to make this many videos about my new uh, Samson camera, but I keep getting questions, so I keep having to answer them. Uh, one of the uh, questions was, uh, what happens when you shoot a remote control toward the lens? Uh, can you actually see the infrared? So let's find that out. And just grabbing two random remote controls you can see that you can see the you can see the LEDs Uh, so this means the camera can see into the infrared. This is actually pretty fun. Because <laughs> you can't see these. The normal eye, you can't see it. So this means you can see into the infrared with this camera. Uh, this raises an exciting possibility because I remember reading about uh, film gels or special filters you could get for cameras that filter out almost all normal visible light to visible to the naked eye and so that lets you take pictures into the infrared or ultraviolet depending on what your camera can do uh, in this case we've proven that the uh, camera can actually see a little into the infrared that the human eye cannot so that means we could take some real infrared uh, video not the fake thermograph green you know special effects that you're used to seeing when people say we turn on the infrared or enhance. Okay, the next question was does the uh, Samson uh, HMX F80 record to one big file or several smaller files? And the answer is both. If you uh, press the record button to start the recording, it opens a new file. When you hit the record button again to stop the recording, it closes that file. However, there's also a little pause button on the side of the camera. If you hit that pause button, it will pause the recording but keep the file open. When you press the pause button again, it records on to that same file. So you can do it either way, one big file or several smaller files. Now, uh, it saves as MP4 files in the H.264 format. As far as I know, there's no actual file size limit. I know uh, some type of files uh, created on computers have a limit of 4 gigabytes. I don't think the H.264 encoding format has that limit. I don't think the MP4 container file has that limit. So in theory you could create you know, one huge recording, uh, take up your full 32 gigabyte uh, memory card or whatever it is you're using, or you can create you know, a gazillion little itty bitty uh, you know, 100 kilobyte files. So depending on whether you use the record button to stop and, and start the recording over or whether you use the pause button, either way it either creates one big file or several smaller files. Okay, the next question is how do you do the slow motion and the time lapse? And actually there is no slow motion. The slow motion is all a computer special effects. When you say slow motion Uh, I just uh, go back in my uh, video editor and I stretch out the timeline. I might stretch out the audio to go with it. Uh, but when I say slow motion, actually, you know, it's just an after effect. It's not something you do in the camera. Time lapse is another thing entirely. Uh, while you're recording, or before you, as you're setting up, before you actually record, you hit the menu button go left and right on the little joypad thing in the middle uh, till you come across time lapse. Go down once, hit OK, and then you can set the number of seconds between frames, one second, three seconds, whatever, and say OK again. And if you do it right, if you do it correctly, then the next time you record you'll see time lapse recording across the center of the screen. And then all you have to do is leave it running for a while and come back, press a record again to stop, 
and enjoy your time-lapse video. Okay, last thing is how to get uh, time-lapse or other video in a vehicle. Uh, let's say you're driving your truck here and you want to uh, record the trip or whatever. You want to set up something very much like this. You want, say, a tripod uh, set up on the, uh, say, passenger side floorboard. Uh, use some bungee cords or something to fasten the shape. And then, of course, you just mount your camera right up here so it's looking out the front of the vehicle. Now, what you do not want to do... Now, what you don't want to do is what I see a lot of people do, which is just hold the camera over here while they're driving. Boom to doom, doom to do, do to do. Uh, setting the camera over here where they can reach it and moving it around, just setting it up here on the dashboard, letting it get shook around. Uh, you want a stable uh, tripod, and as you may notice, if I turn this around here, that's pretty much out of my reach when I'm driving. I will not even be attempt uh, be tempted to try to uh, adjust that while I'm driving. Uh, I set it over there, start it, and then I. You know, if I had to make changes, I have to pull over so I can slide over in the seat and make adjustments. That way I don't have to worry about being distracted while I'm driving. Uh, you also notice I don't do a lot of talking when I'm driving. I either do a time lapse or just a shot, shot of me because I do not want to be distracted. That's as bad as texting or trying to uh, talk on a cell phone uh, while you're driving. So use safe video practices, whatever you want to call it, while you're driving. Okay, I uh, think that's all I have to talk about today. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section below. This is Uncle Troy signing out. Please have a good night. I got this for Christmas. It's a radio controlled light switch. Watch. And it lives right over here. So yes, I installed a radio controlled light switch that controls the light from across the house and I installed it right underneath the light uh, that it controls. Your Uncle Troy is crazy. <laughs>